All right, folks, welcome back. Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. This is our commentary for today. All right, so dollar index daily chart. You can see we did trade down to that discount low. I mentioned how we could probably trade back in between the high here and the low here for this buy side and balance sell side efficiency. Essentially consequent encroachment, but specifically aiming for a likely bounce at the discount low of this old Sell side imbalance, spot side inefficiency. So what's actually happening here and what I kind of was expecting to see happen, and it looks, at least from the initial analysis, it looks like it's happening here. It does not mean it can't just roll right over and my analysis be wrong, but I'm looking at this old discount array relative to this high and this low. This is an old sell side imbalance, spot side inefficiency. We went up into it, it rebalanced all of this, came back down to a discount level which is also relative to this high and this low, all of this in balance. Price went up too much, in my opinion. Came back down, half of this range between this high and this low has been traded to. So consequent encroachment has been satisfied and revisited this old high here, which is part of this south side of balance, buy side efficiency, the basis of this shaded area here. So it traded down into that and it showed a willingness to want to rally. That alone gives us a bread and butter type setup for selling short in sync with the bias I've outlined for say like Euro and cable. Okay, you see how the price trade back down in. Nice buy side of balance, sell side of efficiency here. Consequent encouragement, hammers it perfectly. The body's almost, look at that, it almost gives me the symmetry I'm looking for, which would be the bodies coming right at that low end discount low of the old sell side balance, buy side efficiency. Price rallies up, takes buy side here. And again, on the 15 minute time frame, you can see we trade down. The body's almost giving us the signature for precision, turning right around at that discount low. And again, rallying up, taking the buy side out here. Your dollar daily chart came down, obviously, as I mentioned yesterday, filled that in. I mentioned we could probably fill all this in here, but I would rather see it not completely trade back to this low. You'll see that it didn't do that. It left a little bit of a gap in there. To me, I think it should have been left a little bit wider. That would have been more appropriate for what I'm expecting or rather see, I should say, in terms of my expectation on what price should do. I'd like to see it again, roll over, and again, work towards these discount lows. We have the rejection block with this close here, old low, sell side liquidity there, and then the lower relative equal lows on the daily chart. Doesn't need to be shown here. We showed that yesterday. Euro dollar hourly chart, as I mentioned, we can get back up into here, leave this low untouched. Okay, don't come back all the way to that. Small little gap there, nice little run there. From here, down into here for sell side liquidity, that's a nice little bread and butter setup, trading in sync with the bias I outlined and the premise based on not reaching up to here, but trading back into consequent encroachment that's sufficient between this high, this low, nicely done here, and sell side there. So we'll see, do we get a breaker? So we have high, low, higher high. All of this, we're trading back into that. Do we get that as a bearish breaker that sets up a, another run below here for sell side and then accelerate down into this area here at the old daily low on Euro dollar. 15 minute time frame on Euro. Buy side liquidity pool resting in here. Market rallies up. This is at discount low of the hourly imbalance. Trades up into consequent encroachment. Breaks down. Optimal trade entry. Multiple revisits inside this down candle. One, two, three, four. Then gives up the ghost. Trades into the breaker. Here. And attacks the sell side liquidity right there. It's a little muddy, but now what I want you to see is the underlying 
pinnings of the marketplace are still able to be seen with what I teach you. But notice how it's just really, I guess the word would be not as precise, not as clear, not as uh, the word escapes me. I'm really trying to reach for But in other words, even though I can point this out to you and you can see probably after I point it out, it's not as easy as it is in other instances where, oh, it's obvious. You can see what it's doing. That's the difference between high probability trading and likely happening. And I'm just showing you what I think might happen. And then even though it delivers, it's not as precise. It's not as clean in the delivery of price. There's a lot of fuzziness. Okay. And that's still not the word I'm looking for, but it's back and forth candles. You see what I'm saying? It's like back and forth, back and forth, but still going to where we ultimately would expect for the draw on liquidity and within the bias and not delivering up to that old low. British pound versus US dollar. Daily chart. Again, I mentioned that we would fill this in. We did do that. It likely will retrace back up into this range. We've seen that also. Now, do we get a rollover to attack the sell side here and maybe even make an attempt to get over here? Uh, that remains to be seen, obviously, but we did leave this gap here. So don't be opposed to maybe going up and bumping this high for institutional order flow entry drill. That could potentially happen and then roll over. That's something that you know, may pan out. I'd rather it not completely close this in, thinking along the lines I gave you with the euro dollar. I want to see this portion of the range that's been delivered on the sell side. I, I like to see some of that left open. In other words, if we get a higher run than this high here, it can go up above that, but not trade all the way back to here. I want to leave some kind of a gap there, like we did here. So that to me would be nice. It would kind of like provide the evidence that it still remains heavy for pound and heavy would be indicated as a, a run potentially into this sell side liquidity there. Now, if we completely close this in here, my bearishness is not so near term. In other words, I would not expect it to be as bearish if we come all the way back up here to bump into that. Because to me, that's what everybody else would see. They see this old low here and they want to see it probably go back up to that. I don't want to see that. So I want to see this kind of like remain open, not trade back to this you know, old support, broken term resistance. I'm not interested in that here. I want to see the narrative remain in play that this is heavy. This is this overwhelming indication that it's heavy. So therefore it should move lower attacking the sell side. Remember smart money went short above here. So ideally, yes, they took some out below here. Yes. They took out some profits here, but doesn't it make more sense to take this out too, and maybe even gun for this There's a whole lot more liquidity below here and here than just this low and this low. At least that's my train of thought for right now. Pound dollar hourly chart. Okay. We had a basically a consolidation day, just traded back up into working between the old premium high and discount low on that daily chart. And the 15 minute time frame, you can see we traded back up into a sell side of balance, buy side and efficiency and bearish order block. Trades up into it here, spends a lot of time. And again, same idea. Relative equal lows, sell side liquidity, old discount low on the imbalance. We trade just outside of that premium high into the imbalance here. Buy side's taken. But look how long it spends time in here and then comes into it here. And then it just drifts down to take the sell side out here and attack this in here for the rejection block. So again, same idea that we would look for these types of events. Bias was bearish. We're looking for selling opportunities, all this fuzziness. Okay. To me, it makes sense to say fuzzy. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's just like a lot of back and forth candles. Okay. In other words, the candles aren't really like these here. These are nice. These are real nice, bold, clean looking candles here. It's just fuzzy. It's back and forth, back and forth. That is one of the signatures that gives you a clear indication that this whole business here, even though it delivers like we would expect, 
doing the very things we would expect. It's not high probability and the delivery of price is not as clean. Okay. Clean delivery is like over here where the candles are obviously this well constructed, very bold where their bodies are and the candles wicks and tails are very limited in the scope of how far they expand. And you don't see a lot of back and forth on opposite ends of the candle. Notice that. Whereas over here, you got tails, you got wicks and tails, tails and wicks, and it's back and forth, even though it's still going to where we ultimately see it would likely go based on the ideas and theory I teach you. All right, yesterday I gave you the first in a series of homework assignments, and it was given to you on the framework of the E-mini S&P Futures, December 2021. And... Again, this was the symbol that you should have used. And I didn't read this out yesterday, so I'm going to kind of do it here so that we, we know if you haven't done the homework at this moment, please stop the video and do everything that's being asked of you here. Otherwise, you are wasting this video's learning experience. You are literally wasting your time. You will not get the same level of learning. You will not get the same experiences if you would go through this practice. Okay? If you don't do this, don't be surprised if you don't feel like you're growing. All right, so... Your homework assignment was to mark up all the signatures in price action on the daily, four hour, one hour, and 15 minute time frame. And I encourage you to use any and all intermarket relationships and analysis for this task. The framework was this dealing range high and this low. And what was the basis for why this price move would have ever even occurred? All right, first thing, we're looking at the commitment of traders. And I went to barchart.com, and I have about a year's worth of data. What I did was I pulled up barchart.com's e-mini S&P December contract for 2021 and put in the date of September 1st, 2020 to today's date, September 21st, 2021. And the high here is the highest the commercials held in their position, their net position. And this should be right on this level right there, but it's close enough for government work. The high and the low, all through here, we've been in the lower end. Okay, so from a hedging standpoint, they've been heavily net short, even though you can see it through the net sum zero line here at zero. We're already, yes, below that. I don't use this zero referencing point all the time. Um, from a hedging 12-month look back, Yes, we can see the commercials are in heavy selling in here. Now, while the market's bullish and there is no seasonal tendency for it to likely go lower, this doesn't really mean all that much. It just means that they're, 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 they're hedging basically into new highs, and that's fine. But if we see the market start to take out short-term lows in here like we do there, and we enter a time period when seasonals are bearish, and as we get into the month of September and October, then there's usually some bearishness that is expected on the indices or the stock indices. So we have commercials net short at a time when seasonal tendencies suggest there's a likely correction lower. And then do we see the market take out a short term low after making new highs? We have that here. Now let's take that logic back into the daily chart. We have a down close candle here at a short term low. Market makes new highs and then it breaks down taking out this short term low at a time during September when seasonal tendencies as I teach you in this mentorship that there is a bearish likelihood for stock indices in September and October. Did we see new all time highs? Yes. Did we break down this low? Yes. This down close candle becomes mitigation. We trade back up into it. Then if it's going to go lower from this point here, where do we look for liquidity? We've already went below that. So we're, that's not of any importance. Yes, we have it below this short term low, which gets taken there. But more specifically, if they're going to see smart money shorting, where are they going to aim for? Well, there's a lot of liquidity below here, right? And what about this level right here that we saw a low and then a lower low and then it rallied higher? This is a rejection block. 
extend them out in time. You also have a volume and balance here, and you have the order block. So there's a lot of convergence there with the logic around the 4300 level. That's a likelihood for reaching below this low here. So extending these levels out in time, you'll see that referenced in the lower time frames. All right, so from this low to this low projected out in time, everyone else sees this as what? A bullish trend line. I teach you that if all the framework, as I'm outlining here, bears seasonal tendency, we had new highs, we have a break in market structure during seasonal tendencies likely being bearish, we return back to this level in here. This looks like retail is wanting to buy it. So how will they punish them? Well, they're going to go back to this midpoint for your trend line. This is where the targeted liquidity will be. The market does, in fact, break down, trades to below this low and into that old discount level around the 4300 level. One hour chart, S&P, December contract. I'm showing you the high and the low of that candle just to give you the 50% mark. And I want you to see how we've traded there. Then we broke away from it. Okay. Again, what I'm showing you is, yes, we spent time in here. Yes, there's liquidity below here. The trend line is here. Retail is going to see that. I'm focusing on this candle's midpoint. Right in here, again, on that daily chart, the down close candle, we're splitting that right there, and that's your mean threshold. So it goes to mean threshold, and does it show an energetic movement away? Yes, right there. Now, does it move away from it here? Yes, it does. But does it do it more energetically here? Yes. Why? Because you see the imbalance there. I'll take that away. You can clearly see it better than what I'm showing you now. So this movement here from the mean threshold of that daily bearish candle that frames this high and this low orange level. This willingness of wanting to drive away real quick, that imbalance, that right there is the signature you're looking for. This is what smart money, institutional minded traders are looking for when the logic is in play. When the narrative is bearish, you want to see that. The market comes back up, fills it in, now, does price deliver on the downside? Does it attack sell side on the near term? That would be here and here. Does it? Yes, it does. Then you have a return back in to the trend line, which is not really what I'm basing my logic on here, but it's coming back up into that level here because all of this is mitigation there. Then we break down, last up close candle, that's a bearish order block. Do up close candles now support bearish price? Because that's going to be signifying that institutional order flow is in fact bearish. That means, yes, the market should continuously look for sell side liquidity. Well, we have a down close candle, it moves away from it, comes back up, and at that moment, does the market trade lower? Yes, it does. Market comes back up, rebalances in here. Small little fear value gap. Does the market want to move away after it fills in? Yes, it does. Creates a nice little imbalance here. Comes back up in, institutional order flow, entry drill, there. Drives hard lower, back in, retraces, another dive back in. Now look at the bodies of the candle right there. Old rejection block on the daily, hits the 4300, but our level, which is the daily rejection block, that right there is perfect. Perfect delivery. Delivers it, and then now it's able to come back to a premium array relative to this range here. Where's the imbalance? There. It revisits that there and starts to sell off again. Where's it go? Small little imbalance right there. So from this imbalance to that, another level of delivery. Beautiful. Fifteen-minute time frame. Again, you can see the mean threshold of that daily down close candle that frames that orange level there. That's mitigation. Fills in the imbalance, sells off, 
trend line not as important as we like to see the logic over here. We have a high, low, high. Look at the bodies. They're higher than this. Even though this doesn't look as clean, this would be a breaker. Down close candle, extend it out in time, hits it here. Not the trend line, I'm not looking at that, I'm looking at this. Hits it, breaks down, order block, fair value gap, institutional order flow, and then drives hard into our old rejection block on the daily chart. Then we see the revisiting of that and bounds there on the hourly chart. Let's take a closer look at what intermarket relationships would help you in this area here to anticipate this breakdown and subsequent reach into this old discount low. So we clean the chart off. There's nothing on here. Now I'm going to show you the relationship between this and the bond market. Ideally, you want to see the bond market move in opposite direction. Okay, so if the futures market for the bonds, which is ZB, which is a 30-year December contract, Z2021 is the year. This is the line chart of the 30-year Treasury bond December contract for 2021. I want you to notice the relationship between this low and how it's starting to trade higher here is opposite to this. This is perfect market symmetry. You want this. There are times when they will move for a very short period of time in the same direction, or one will be held in consolidation and another one's allowed to move. That is not the scope I want you to be focusing for when you're trading, because high probability trading is when you see SPOOs, which is slang for S&P mini futures, or S&P futures, and the bond going opposite direction. If SPOOs are expected to go lower, bonds should be expected to go higher. It's just that simple. This is not the bond yield. It's not the interest rate itself. It's the actual futures market because there's been some confusion in the past. I haven't been so specific in some of the lessons when it talked about bonds. This is the underlying futures contract. So when this goes higher, the interest rate is dropping. This is the S&P market declining. We should see bond prices going up, which is interest rates going down. Okay, so let's take a deeper dive into this. This is the U.S. Treasury bond market at the high end chart. The midpoint is the 10-year Treasury, and this is the 5-year Treasury. I want you to take a look at this low here. The 30 year, we make a low and a lower low. And this line chart is shown on the low. It's plotted on the low. Okay, so when you go into this little symbol here and this little symbol here, this is what you're going to use for the compare tab. So you'll open up a U.S. Treasury bond futures chart, and the symbol would be Z as in zipper, B as in boy, Z as in zipper, 2021. That would give you this chart here. Set it to a 15 minute time frame. And then toggle the little settings on this, or you can right click on the actual symbol where it has your candlestick and then go to settings and then plot it as a line chart and on the low. Same thing here when you use the compare tab, it would be up here somewhere on your trading view. You click, compare, uh, click on the compare tab rather, and then add the symbol ZNZ2021 and then Click New Pane, and it'll overlay it under here. Thank you again for that, Tori. And then you add another Compare tab and add in symbol ZFZ2021. And again, plot this on a line basis on the low. And you'll notice that we have a lower low formed here. We have a higher low formed here and a higher low formed there. At a critical time in the 17th, and then notice what's happening here. After this occurs, after this interest rate triad divergence, SMT divergence between all of the bond market, then do we see accumulation? We have a low, a higher low. We have a low, a lower low. 
we have a low and a lower low. Is that SMT divergence? Yes, it is. After a key turning point, this supports bullish prices for bonds, bearish for S&P. This, my friends, is the secret, secret sauce that makes index trading easy. So smooth, so easy, like taking candy from a baby. This is what you do as an S&P trader. Larry Williams does not teach this. Okay, I've seen everything that man has done and made public for S&P trading. This is not from him. George Angel has never done anything like this in his life. He's never wrote about it. He's never seen it before. Okay, so those are the two influencers I had in my early days in the 90s for S&P trading. And my friends, before someone else runs off air and creates some little fairy tale saying that this is somehow taken from them, it is not. Okay, once this occurs with the framework of a seasonal tendency, a break in market structure, as we outlined in the S&P market, then you start looking for these signatures here. Divergence, okay? This is a divergence, bullish. This is showing weakness, this is showing weakness. All you need is one. That crack in correlation supports the notion that this turning point should continue higher. We see it again here, lower, lower, higher. It's gonna continuously move higher. So what you're reading constantly, this is all part of tape reading. Okay. The art of tape reading is continuously measuring, developing, and dynamic accumulation and distribution. That's what I'm looking for between these bond markets. If you get these signatures, it's going to suggest that yes, that yes, continuously move higher. And if that occurs, that means that the S&P market should be free to go lower with very little difficulty. Or as we teach it here, a low resistance liquidity run. Now, let's go back into the S&P chart. Now we're at the bottom chart here is S&P. And this is the 30-year bond market. This is that turning point. We saw the divergence between the 10-year, 5-year, and 30-year. This is, again, the 30-year. Here is your return back into that little gap where it broke away from the mean threshold. You don't see it here, but I'm going to change it to a, a candlestick chart again. But this right there, that return back into that filling in the fair value gap occurs at the time when the bond market shows an S&T divergence. This, my friends, is where that little magic skeleton key enters the lock that guards all the financial futures markets wealth when it comes to index trading. This is the magic bullet. This is the silver bullet. This is the panacea, friends. This is the thing. This is the holy grail. This is the thing that makes you itch to make the, the money, to make you get in there and take a trade. You're waiting for this very thing. This is the same thing that will repeat in every single high probability trade. This. Returns back into the fair value gap there when we have a divergence. If this is going to go higher, this is going to go lower. Once this achieves its objective, you no longer refer to the bond market. You stop. It might continuously flag more movement. That's fine. But you as the institutional minded trader, you stop. You no longer reference the bond market. You stop, you move to the sidelines, and you wait to see if it does continue with a longer term, higher time frame macro bias. Do not marry these trades in stock indices. You don't do that. You're not a trend trader. You're not trying to be in here and trying to be a large fund trader, trying to you know, run six month trends. You're looking for surgical strikes that are so clean, high probability setups that once you get them and you move to the sidelines, it's so rewarding because you're literally like a guided missile. You're going in, taking it and running. And it just, it's a beautiful thing. It's artwork. If the futures market was calling me back, in other words, if Forex said, you know, everything goes upside down and it becomes a one world government <laughs> and it's one currency and all the, all the, Forex currencies go away. 
Okay, and I'm talking, this is so extreme. I'm not saying it can't happen, because in my mind, the Bible does imply that's likely to occur. And I'm not teaching here. I'm not doing Bible studies. I'm just saying that that's the end result. And if I'm still here when that happens, number one, I'm going to be alarmed. Two, if I see it, how would I trade? I wouldn't obviously trade Forex because the pairs would be consolidated into one currency. Stock index futures will still operate like this. So that's what I would be doing. I'd go back to this. All right, folks, this is going to be a unicorn. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to do a study on Bitcoin versus U.S. dollar. And I'm using Coinbase for this chart here. I guess you're welcome to use Coinbase or Bitstamp. I go back and forth between these two. And that may be something of a error on my part. I'm not trying to claim a perfect understanding or a greater understanding or a higher understanding of crypto. All we're doing is going in and studying price. Okay, but I want you to study this high to today's low. Okay, and we're gonna go through the things that I teach you here in the mentorship, what would constitute support in this move here from the things I teach you in mentorship, all right? So obviously you won't have a whole lot of supportive intermarket relationships, I guess, that we have like in S&P and bonds. But for here, just go through what you've been exposed to in the mentorship and try to frame out what constitutes this high being a selling opportunity down to this low right here. Okay, and that's going to be your homework for tonight. Looking at the time frames of the daily, four hour, hourly, and 15 minute time frame. All right, and I'll touch with you tomorrow. Until then, be safe.